Wandering on the Chinese social media, it is merely an ordinary day. Suddenly, a latest topic popped out and caught my eye. Nigeria has experienced 317 people of kidnapping. Since I was born in China, a relatively stable society, I couldn't imagine events likewise occurring around me. In shock, when I slide my page to the comment section. Since the, these words are too dirty, I will not translate those words. All accusations and cuts all refer to one opinion, that African people does not has the ability to stabilize their nation. I've been wondering that it's sad to choose. Investigated and read some of the materials I'd like to give my point of view. Firstly, let's preview the briefly history of the colonial Africa. Imagine an ordinary day. Suddenly, black smoke appeared on the far sea horizon. Crisscross was placed on the spar, but the benevolence of God did not shine upon the so-called dark continent. Coercive physical labor, maniacal looting of natural resources merely add pain to this continent and its people. After World War II, sporadic rebellion gradually turned to, to revolt and free African people. Nations were founded. However, African people was not liberated. Some of our people use numerical facts, stating that African people does not have the ability to stabilize their nation. In fact, from the perspective of numerical data, that is kind of true. As you can see, the part of Africa is dark. That means that they have low GDP, high crime rate, and high mortality rate. But did these keyboard critics combine this real event and background history? I mean, who does not want to live under a nice circumstance? There are political regimes controlling these nations. There might be offsprings of colonizers. And they might be selfish property who want to suck the last remaining blood of this lucrative continent. Africa has never stepped out of the neo-imperialism life. The trigger of the notorious genocide in Rwanda has been buried since the colonial era. The Belgian army force led by this guy, King Leopold II, invaded the Congo region and took the sovereignty of the Kingdom of Rwanda from Germany. In order to govern people in this nation more efficiently, the Belgian army force divided people into two separate ethnic groups, one is called Hutu and one is called Tutsi, according to people's closeness. After the retreatment of, of the army, the Belgian army, the, the conflict between those two groups emerged and gradually evolved into a bloody massacre which took one million people's life. Well, until now, my description is kind of negative, but I believe that most African nations are currently stepping out of the legacy of colonialism and embracing the bright future. Thanks to the development of technology, United Nations can respond to natural disasters in Africa more swiftly. More and more capitals and wells are flourished into the, the continent, aiming to create another economic miracle like China, like Japan, like Korea. Former owners of these nations felt guilty about what they did in those nations, founding political organizations to repay them. The loser of Commonwealth is a, a typical example that Portugal, being a famous empire that colonized Africa, repaid to its African territories. Angola, Mozambique, Cape Verde, Sao Tome and Principe, and Guinea-Bissau has received investments from Portugal, Brazil, and the Special Administrative Region of Macau. The United States has founded a department that aided $65 million annually to African uh, former protectorate called Liberia. These help include constructing roads, helping um, training more educators, and helping female rights. Most significantly, China did a great job to investment in Africa. The Tanzania Railway helped uh, Tanzania and Zambia to scoot to reach the port of Dar es Salaam. The famous One Belt and Road Initiative really brought, boosted the economy in Africa and generated a lot of opportunity between China and Africa, the, most, uh, the future powerhouse of the world. Why people are becoming racist? We're come to superior race. It is just the pathetic delusions of frog in a well. The president of China, 
the founding father of the Communist Party, Mao Zedong, announced his anti-racism policy in the last century. The label of evil colonist and imperialist system, which flourished with the enslavement and trafficking of the black race, will surely end with the complete liberation of the black race. Stereotypes must and shall be broken in our generation, the most rational generation. Thank you very much.